Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Scott Worden, the TOS guy. And today, we are very fortunate to have our second real TOS patient story. Kyle, welcome. Hi, how are I you? I have not heard your story in any detail, so I'm going to be as impressed as everybody else here. Why don't you just start at the beginning and just wing it? We're all excited to hear what you have to say. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I haven't really done this with anyone, really, so hopefully I could tell everything that happened in my life up to this point. Um, so this really all started in the spring of 2017. I was a full-time student at a junior college nearby, and I was taking 13 and a half units, and I was taking three online classes that required a lot of typing. I was a very avid gamer. I gamed all the console. I was gaming a lot on the PC. Um, I took a weightlifting class. So it was a lot of heavy weight I was um, throwing around. Um, I liked to text a lot. I was I had very bad posture just generally. And then I read books like kind of like slouched over. Uh, I just did a lot of activities. I had a lot really bad posture. And as the months were going by, with um, I was like doing weightlifting classes. And I'm like, man, my hands are feeling kind of sore. And as the months progress, um, I noticed so soreness in my fingers and my thumbs and my pinkies as I was, as I was gaming or holding a controller or uh, using the mouse. So I uh, decided to see a general practitioner here at uh, uh, the organization over here. Uh, first time I ever saw because I was 18. I had to get my own general practitioner. And I, you know, I go to see him and I tell him all my symptoms I'm having. My, I'm having pain in my thumbs and my fingers. My pinkies are really sore. And then he, he exam fully examines my hands. He like you know, does all these tests, like tests my strength. Like he just taps places on my hands. And uh, yeah, he says like, well, he's like, I think you should just moderate what you're doing. Um, he gives me splints to take home to wear at night. And then he just, uh, he didn't really give me anything to do after that. Just, just He just told me just to moderate my symptoms. So I continue, I have to, you know, I have, still have a month of school left, so I have to keep on doing that with the online classes, a lot, still a lot of typing to do. Um, and the symptoms just got worse. They just got way worse. Um, I was able to get through the semester fine, but I just noticed this, I was so off of my hands um, when I was gaming or just doing my schoolwork. Um, and then when I was like gaming, I, I was actually having like really intense pain in my hands. Uh, it was really bad where I just couldn't hold the controller anymore and, and the pain was like lasting for weeks on end. And I just couldn't do anything physically with my hands. It was just so bad. I couldn't like do any chores. Like I just, whenever I would move the garbage can just to bring it back into the side of the house, um, it would just hurt. I just couldn't grip it without any pain. I couldn't like put the dishes back without any pain. I couldn't like do anything like like this gaming just really really aggravated the symptoms like very badly and my palms my hands and uh i just remember I, once i was reading a book i was just holding the book and the hands was like really just got sore just so painful i just couldn't grip anymore and then that's when i realized something's really off my hands or the symptoms of both sides and i just kind of got to a point where i wasn't doing anything like i would avoid doing anything to upset the symptoms of my hands um it took a month really and i was didn't really know how to process it because i never really dealt with any kind of prolonged pain and uh, uh yeah i just got to a point where like i just broke down emotionally because i just i couldn't do anything physically and uh i, I broke down in tears because i was just it was my hands were hurting so bad and i didn't know what to do i didn't i was just doing things that they said on the internet to help with your pain with your hands and then I, I was calling my grandpa like just so just, I was just so hysteric with, with all the pain I was dealing with and uh you know he told me just to go back to see your doctor and I and I do that I go see I go back to the doctor and uh I'm trying to remember what exactly he wanted me to do um he just did the same kind of thing with my hand my he examined the hands the same thing he did the same for before I saw him and I told him everything but he didn't really um want me to do any I, I don't recall him wanting me to do anything at that moment like he just said, like he didn't see anything at the moment. He was talking about like doesn't want to do cortisone because uh, um, makes because of my age. He says he wants me to avoid surgery. With um, that was really yeah. I didn't get any like any plan to do something or any uh like any diagnostics. I mean, I, I actually I was was given to do an X ray for my hands and that they didn't find anything with that. But other than that, I can't remember anything at that moment. Then, but my aunt, I have an aunt in my family who's a, a doctor, so she's really familiar with the system. Uh, she was really uh, pushing me to push for uh, 
see a hand specialist because the nature of my hands were just, I was dealing with the hand symptoms and I pushed for it. And then he says like, um, I only going to refer you to a hand surgeon if you're, if you're a surgical candidate, but I'll see, I'll have to refer you to a occupational therapist. And so I said, yeah, let's do that. And I do that. And the assessments go by, uh, I don't think she told me what was going on too, but she was like, always saying like, man, your hands are so cold all the time, but, um, your circulation is really good. I'm like, Oh wow. Okay. And then, uh, she gives me like these stretches to do. Then uh, I don't really feel that better. The the treatment didn't really help at all. It's did ultrasound, all that stuff. And, um, uh, one second. I'm trying to remember, cause I keep texting, uh, messaging him. I really want to see a specialist and he, he didn't want to budge. He said, I only want to see me if, uh, want me to see a specialist if I'm a surgical candidate. So he had me do a, a blood Sorry, test. Uh, was this your primary care doc or the hand uh, yes. specialist? Yes. Oh, no, the, this is the primary care doctor I've been messaging. Okay. Um, so I uh, message him and he has me, he orders me a blood test. I think he, I think it's the B12 is one of those tests they do for like nerves. And then he orders like a EMG at the end. Uh, later, I do the blood test and I pass that. Of course, like nothing, didn't find anything significant. And then he orders like an EMG. So I go see a musculoskeletal specialist. Um, who does the MG? Like I, he puts like this thing on my hands and he like jolts it whenever like to see the nerves. And I, it was actually really hurt. It was actually hurting a little bit when he put it on certain places. It was just so sensitive. But uh, yeah, he said like, oh, I passed it. Um, he didn't really tell me anything to do after that. Um, and then like I just walked out like with no plan. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna mess with my general pr practitioner again. And then I tell him like, hey, I, I really want. I passed the EMG. I I, I really want to see a hand surgeon. And then um, he's like, uh, well, so you reached the end of all my medical advice. Uh, we had done everything I would I recommended. Um, the, you're, you're not a surgical candidate, so not, I'm not going to let you see a, a hand surgeon. But then he said at the end that you're more than welcome to see another person. So I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done right now. So I see another uh, general practitioner. Um, that didn't really work out too, but... Um, she had me like, I was taking, if I could interrupt, this is all within the same medical system. It's all within the same medical system. Yes. Um, so I see another general practitioner. She has me stop taking this acne medicine that I was taking uh, orally. Um, she was like, maybe I think she was theorizing or thinking that maybe the pain was causing joint pain. So I stopped that. And of course it didn't uh, change anything with my pain. Um, and then I was like kind of pushing for her to see like, um, with the metal, the musculoskeletal specialist, that's kind of where I was being referred to for the hand, the hand thing, rather than seeing an actual, uh, hand surgeon. And then, um, she told me like, yeah, I don't, I don't think you should go there cause they're not going to help you. And I think it's going to be a waste of time. And then, uh, I pushed for one. I see one where, uh, no, we don't do EMG. We just, he just did a full uh, hand examination full, like just took in my whole history, just examined purely my hands. And he, he was pretty, really, really rough with it, actually. I mean, I was actually kind of hurting when he was doing certain things. But, uh, yeah, he just said, like, the speech, like, oh, there's no magic pill, no magic shot or a cure-all shot to fix all your problems. He didn't really tell me what was going on. But then I messaged him about it, like, what was going on after the appointment. Um, he said muscle strain. Um, so I was really confused. But, like, I wanted a time to, like, how, how, what do I should do to get better? Like, he said like there's no timetable uh, for getting better. He, he like I think he said some exercise in the message, but I was really unclear how to do, what to do. And then you know also the second general practitioner I mentioned, the uh, one I saw like after the first one, she like thought it was tendonitis of the hands, and then the first doctor was thinking repetitive strain. So I was getting all these different diagnoses. Um, and then um, I was talking to my parents like, yeah, I think we're done with this organization because they're not want to do anything they're not going to help me and then my parents want to keep going because we're it's our insurance so it'd be kind of costly to go out of pocket and we try to push to see the like the head head of the the group of the musculoskeletal special musculoskeletal specialist excuse me and uh we try to see him i come, come in and, and then um the guy the second guy i saw the second special i saw he just messaged me like yeah uh we talked it over and like it was to be a waste of time for me to come in they, he actually said like it'll be a waste of time for you to come in. And, um, he just gave me some things to do like stretches or whatnot with my hands. But like, whenever I stretched my hands or whatnot, it would just make my pain worse. So 
Uh, that was it. I was I I was done, and I. Uh, and now, at which point, how much time has elapsed since seven, 2017 when you first had symptoms? So this is pretty much everything I'm telling right now. This is pretty much my whole summer. Just um, seeing all these doctors, this is pretty much my whole summer. Um, pretty much like at the end of that second special when I got that message. That was like near when I was about to get back into uh, the fall uh, for my school because I was taking I had to take more units. Um, but yeah, then. Um, Took about like a month or two because I we like my grandpa got me to involved with this uh hand surgeon here in the area that was kind of well known so he got me a deployment through uh, out of pocket so it was going to be another this? who is this now uh Doctor Mazur okay um so six weeks away um and I had to wait but uh, it was a pretty long wait because I I still had a really hard time using my hands I had I was taking uh. 13 units 12 units and um luckily most of them were none of them were online and but uh, a lot of them were just lecture based but was, i still had a really hard time dri driving was a real uh, pain to do at the time i just couldn't drive um i remember when i was driving back from a class i had no symptoms my hands were just like so it was hurting so bad what just i just had to just get out of the car because it was hurting so bad and the pain was there for like two weeks after i was done with the after that I couldn't, I refused to drive after that. I refused to do so many things physically at that time, just because I was so scared to aggravate my symptoms. So, so anxious to aggravate them. And uh, yeah. And then um, that week where I was going to see him, I, uh, we had the, the wildfires here. So that was a real trip. I had uh, lost my house and then uh, it took oh, uh, that. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Uh, that Friday, I think uh, I honestly didn't really think much of it. Cause I was like, so like my mind was so, off with the whole situation with my hands i was like i just lost my house like okay and then uh I'm sorry yeah um so i wait till friday yeah i see him on a friday of the week so like this lost smoke and then we see him and he was really kind he took me and he ex fully examined my hands um he did all these like tests i like passed most of them but like he said my he pushed pressed on my thumb he was like doing this test where he pressed on my thumb i couldn't really resist him too well especially on my right side um and then he gave me cortisone shots on the on on the spot, like after everything was talked through and done. After he like didn't know the X-ray of my hands, so just to check for something. Um, so he gave me cortisone on my right hand, and then he, he was like talking about like oh, well, talking about like surgery with the carpal tunnel, um, how like it's like nine out of ten people get like no symptoms after a certain amount of time, and I was very successful. And then he like told me like yeah, can you do the left hand for the cortisone? And, yeah, he does that. And I walk out and I was like pretty feeling pretty good because I thought I got the diagnosis. Or I got the right uh, help at the time. And I was feeling pretty good. Like I, I was staying at a hotel at the time. Um, but it's still my uh, pinkies and my thumbs were still really hurting. Like it, the, the symptoms were really still there. And then not much really happens that end because I was kind of in that fall area. Like it, once I transitioned to the January of 2018, that's when I like met with him again. Once my insurance, we changed insurances and, uh, I met with him about like talk about surgery. Cause I was, I was really fixated on getting surgery. Cause at the time I was like, man, I think surgery is going to fix this problem. I think I could you know, turn everything around. I can start using my hands again. Um, so I was really fixated on getting surgery. Um, I really wish at the time I would re rethought about that. Um, so January 2018, when I met with him that first week, we talked about the surgery, just the what what's what to expect and all that stuff and i said okay can you do my left hand um so we do my left hand and like around january 21st i do the surgery and i was in another uh full uh semester of classes uh 12 units i believe um one was kind of a hybrid class uh but yeah i was taking f full units or full semester or full excuse me and uh as the weeks well, after the surgery the surgery went well but uh as I was, the weeks went by with the surgery after the week after the yeah surgery, excuse me, I keep repeating myself. Uh, I was feeling a lot of pain. This pain really developed in my neck, like on both sides. I could just, I could just really feel it right there, and then my, the back of my uh, upper trapezius was just really tight, really hurting. I was, and I was feeling all this really bad pain with my rotator cuffs. They were hurting so bad. I didn't want to move my arms, and just it was the pain was so bad. I just to want to like. I, 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 I avoided taking showers because I didn't want to lift my arms up because they were hurting so bad. And I, I, I was feeling suicidal at times because this, 
it, the pain was just so bad. Like I just, I didn't want to take anymore. And like, I didn't know what to do really. I was just kind of scared for myself. And I luckily got help at the, my junior college. There was a, they have a free uh, mental help, health help up there over there. And uh, I took a, saw the counselor there and they, we, she took me in. She like promised me if I ever think about that, I'd call someone or text someone. Um, but anyways, I go to see the doctor or no, I go back because, you know, they, they have to take the cast off and the, the stitches. And I tell the doctor like, man, I'm having all this shoulder pain right here. Like, mm -hmm. and I examine my shoulders. So he has me do PT um, for the shoulders. Cause um, he, I think that the PT was thinking of shoulder impingement, but yeah, as the months progressed, I mean, it wasn't too bad after. I mean, I was still having a lot of pain with my shoulders. I was still having pain with my thumbs and pinkies. I can't remember anything significant between those events of that, of that uh, spring of 2018, but uh, I do do the right hand surgery in uh, June of June 4th of 2018. And that went a lot better. Like I, I was doing the, the exercises they recommend to avoid like all this like shoulder pain. And then, but yeah, I mean, that year was definitely a lot better. I mean, I didn't, it's kind of weird. Like they said in the, with the surgeries, they say like, you, you feel immediate relief with the hand pain right away. But I didn't, I didn't feel really any different. Like I, both hands still felt the same. I didn't really notice any difference. My pinkies were still hurting. Um, my thumbs still hurting. I still feeling like this neck pain right here. That was, I, it was so uncomfortable when I would look down. Um, but yeah, as the, as that, I'm going to kind of skip over this, the, fall of 2018 because nothing too significant happened but then once the this the spring of 2019 is when i this the symptoms really started to kick in again i took a online class um it was a kind of a passion class it was creative writing and i was a lot of typing of course and <laughs> of course the symptoms has come flying back even just way worse than before my my neck was hurting like i just couldn't like look at a tv my, the back of my neck was just flare it up my my hands are always so cold. My I'm feeling pain, shooting pains in my armpit, uh, tingling through my chest, and uh, my so bad. The pain was so bad, and I was I got super depressed because I like wow. I, I thought I got through this. I I uh, I really thought I got through this with the surgeries. I and then I I went to go back to see the doctor who did the surgeries, and I told him like everything, all the symptoms going on, like all the new symptoms, like just not with the hands, just all with the arms, the shoulders, neck. And I told him everything. And he kind of like took it all in. He's like, looked at me like, uh, what were you doing? Like, and then I told him like, I was really up. I was trying to like, yeah, I was trying to like do stuff. I wasn't going crazy with video games or anything. I was just, just trying to do things. So they gave me a sheet that says I can go back to uh, my normal activities. And I tried doing certain things. Um, yeah. And just, I just, he just told me, like, he gave me this whole speech about how I'm just, this is how the way it is. This is your anatomy. This is the way you're built. And, um, the surgeries, he's saying the surgery should have worked, but you're that, you're that 10% that didn't work, um, for the symptoms. And he didn't really give me anything to do. He just said he could order an EMG, but I had a re really weird feeling back in my head that I was going to pass it. So since I already did it two years ago and, uh, yeah, I felt really destroyed after that uh, meeting of the doctor because I really, really looked up to him. And um, I just I felt really re read down. I really I really started to uh, start with the self-loathing of my uh, uh, self because I really blamed myself for getting this uh, all these symptoms because I really thought it was all my fault with everything that was going on. <sighs> but luckily, uh, I, you know, I, I kept my aunt in the loop about it because, you know, she's the She's really, really knows his medical system very well. And uh, she her, had me see her specialty, Kyle. She's a podiatrist. Okay. Good. Yeah. And uh, so she has some colleagues she works with. She's uh, she's up in Palo Alto. Um, so I see one of her, uh, call it a hand surgeon. He takes me in. He was really nice. And uh, he had me x-ray my elbows just to check if there was a bone spur going on. But then he just took on my whole situation. Like I told him like everything that was going on with the symptoms. And he's like, man, like this doesn't make any sense with carpal tunnel. Cause like, you just, he's like thinking my age and he's and like thinking sorry, about this. My, my connection cut out for a little bit. Who is this that you were seeing at this point? I was seeing a hand surgeon at, um, one of her colleagues at, a uh, Palo Alto. Okay, um, good. yeah. Um, who, who yeah. He this? took me, Who's uh, Dr. Diaz. Okay, good. So keep going. So he did some elbow x-rays. Yeah. He like just took, did some like hand, uh, just like some hand, uh, examination. He took in my history and he was like, he was really perplexed with the situation because he's like, man, I've never seen anyone at your age uh, deal with carpal tunnel. I've never seen anyone with 
get symptoms of carpal tunnel within a year after surgery like this. And then he, uh, so what he did, he's had me, uh, order, he ordered a MRI of my cervical spine. Um, he had, he recommended me, I see a neurologist. Um, and then also I was seeing that general, my general practitioner at the time, a different one that through Sutter, cause Sutter is my main, my new system now. And I saw like a, a temporary doctor cause my main doctor was really busy. He was like, did all the tests for autoimmune diseases like lupus, um, gout, all those, like he did a full body X order, a full body X-ray. I do all that. Nothing significant pops up. Was then this I see before my, before or after your cervical spine MRI? I think it was before. Um, they're relatively close. Um, but I do do the cervical sign or MRI and that went pretty good. Uh, no, they didn't see anything significant. Um, I do see my general practitioner, the, my, my regular one. And she like was really like suspecting that it could be uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Hmm. And, uh, she like does all these tests or examines my, my, my bones and joints to see if anything was tender. She orders some blood work and I was a uh, very weekly positive with a CRP test. So she has me see a rheumatologist. Uh, so I see a rheumatologist at uh, her clinic. Um, I'm at my aunt's clinic. Um, so I see her, but uh, I do see the, I think I see the neurologist first. So I do a lot of physical, I see me, him, I tell him my whole history and I tell him my, like all my symptoms that are going on. And so he does a full examination of like my arms, my hands, and does all like the test with the instrument that he use. And he has me see how I walk and like how I, how my balance is. And he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't see anything. He doesn't really, we're kind of perplexed with what's going on. Um, and then we're like, he was thinking about it, but he's like, okay, I'm going to order an EMG just to check. And then I think it, I guess like a little bit a week later and I do the EMG and then he's like, yeah, this, the, I don't see anything. There's nothing here that I could publish these numbers with the EMG. And I was just really like perplexed right there. Like, wow, what's going on then if I'm, I, I, I passed the EMG again. And then I wasn't really sure what to do after that because he wasn't sure what to do. And then I do see the rheumatologist and I do all the tests. She actually has me order a uh, MRIs with my hands, specifically both sides uh, after the the meeting because she had me do some more blood work and she had me ask all these questions about rheumatoid arthritis and I said no to pretty much all of them. I do the tests with the hands. I was really anxious about it because I was like kind of thinking, about, man, this would be terrible to have rheumatoid arthritis at my age." And uh, um. I did them and I, they didn't say anything in my hands. I was really relieved because I mean, I was like, man, Aunt room to rice, man, that would suck. But uh, yeah, and I go back to see the the hand surgeon and we just talk about it. And like, yeah, he's just, he's just so perplexed. He just doesn't know. He just said, I don't know what's going on. Like he, he just said that. Like I was kind of happy he said that because I, I don't want doctors just kind of saying stuff just to. But anyways, uh, so I wasn't sure what to do. They just told me to just keep using my hands because I was like, at the time, very afraid to use my hands for such simple activities. Like I remember one time I was like brushing my teeth with the electronic toothbrush and my, the vibration just made my hand just go into shock. And like, I just couldn't use my hand that night because it was hurting so bad. So I was really avoiding such a uh, simple task that people just find so easy to do at my age. I just was, I was more just scared to do it rather than I can't think that I can do it. Uh, Cause I was so uh, anxious about getting the symptoms back. I was just really depressed at the time with, with the whole situation. Um, yeah, it was just such a, it was such a terrible summer. And, uh, at the end, I mean, I felt relieved because I didn't find anything serious at the time. So I, I was, you know, I go back to school and I was, I was taking the half units cause I was really still afraid to take a uh, full load and take some classes that required me to be, you know, take be really on with the, the class. Cause it was really hard cause I had to use a lot of note taking services for the, for the classes, for the lectures. So that really helped. But yeah, that, as the months went by, the, the symptoms were just really bad. I just couldn't move my shoulders at that point. I just didn't want to move my shoulders. It was hurting so bad. And I'm like, okay, I, I think I need to see someone else because I need help. And I just can't get over this pain that I was dealing with. So uh, my parent, my dad helped me try to find a, another hand surgeon in the area on the, on the internet. Like they just try to pop, type in hand surgeon in the area. We find one and we try to make an appointment with him. I think it was like a month or two out. So I have to wait for that. But uh, yeah, I just still have to wait for that. And um, I got to see him in uh, February. And the, he, uh, I told him about my whole situation, or like most of it at least. And uh, he just, I told him about how I was having all this pinky pain, all this 
pain through my arms and my neck. And then after he talked about that, told, talked about our history, he, uh, he was the first one to uh, examine my shoulder blades. So he like looked at my uh, shoulder blades, like he saw them, like he had me move it this way, like he just looked at the back and see how I moved them. And then he checked for the position in them. And then he told me after like, yeah, your shoulder blades are kind of out of place. And he said stuff like that. I'm trying to remember, cause this was a while ago. So this is before like the lockdown happened. So this felt like a long time ago. Um, but yeah, he kind of like gave me a, a, a like he's saying like the, the, the compression issues has come from above, but he never actually said uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. So I never actually thought of knew it was thoracic outlet syndrome. I actually never really heard of that phrase until uh, the basketball player, uh, Marco Foltz got it. So um, who, is the, who is this doctor now who did the more? His name boxing? is a Dr. Bollinger, Michael Bollinger okay. here. He's a, yeah. Um, That's good. But, but anyways, uh, yeah. So he gives me a referral to uh, occupational therapy or physical therapy. I go to this area that was kind of, awkward because i wasn't really sure what the diagnosis was like yeah he told me to do this i have the paper but i didn't i wasn't really told what was going on <laughs> so uh um this is like a couple weeks before the the lockdown happened so like um i was kind of knowing what was going on that uh and i you know we do some treatments in my hands she has me do like some ro rotator cuff exercises but uh <sighs> i got like, stopped going because i like man this pandemic's gonna this looks like it's getting really bad so i stopped going and then I kind of start doing these uh, rotator cuff exercises at home, just like, cause my shoulders were hurting so bad. I just like, I'm, I gotta do this cause I, my hip shoulders hurt so bad. So I just do like these simple, like internal rotation exercises, external after I saw the occupational therapist and incredibly like my symptoms got a lot better as the months went by during the lockdown, like a lot better, like way better than any point before I got these symptoms. And it's crazy, but like, once it got to like June or May, I like, I had some really bad flare ups cause I was doing some exercise at home where I was like flare, uh, like throwing my arms around cause I was, you know, doing cardio <laughs> and, uh, the whole arms were just like flaring up. Like I could feel all the nerves just going through my whole arms. It was hurting really bad. I could feel the tingling going through my shoulder blades. <sighs> I, I got really sad again. I'm like, Oh God, I got to deal with this again. And I like, I, my parents convinced me to go see him again. If, uh, that's what he told me to come back if the issue still persists and I go back and then like we talk, it was like June, uh, mid June. And that we go talk. He's like, saying, yeah, this is, this, this is gonna be a long process. He's like, tell me like, this is not going to be like a quick fix overnight with the, the, the treatment. And, uh, right. He just said classic thoracic outlet syndrome. I like looked at him so bewildered. I'm like, what, what'd you say? And I'm like, he like, I, I and he's, he's like telling me like, yeah, I think it's thoracic outlet syndrome. And he just, uh, I was so. This is Doctor uh, Bollinger. Yes, yeah, Doctor Bollinger. Yes, because I was like, I get. I was so like, oh my god! Like, I actually got a diagnosis, and like, I was just so euphoric. Like, I was so happy when he told me that, and like, I walked out, like, told my dad, "Man, I got that. I'm diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome." And we like look it up, and we're like, "Man, all these symptoms make sense." I'm like, I have had all these symptoms on the, on the the definition, and it's crazy because like, I, my hands were always so cold for the past four years, and like, my parents were like, "Man, why are your hands so cold?" And like, I'm. Uh, it made so much sense and and he had me up uh, do the he filed no referral for pt uh so that awkwardly like he i don't think it went through so i had to come back a month or two like hey did you throw put in that referral and then he put it in i get a call from the pt clinic i i go see the therapist here in the sebastopol and uh she was really nice uh, uh she's been in the game for a while and uh she had she gave me all these exercises for the scapular stabilizers and she uh, gave me like this belt for uh, the rib to press down. Um, I had to like press down. I don't know if I, I can visualize that well. This, what's the name of this therapist? Uh, her name is Honest Stay Poot, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but yeah, I, it was really, she was really nice. I mean, she really worked really well. Um, she was very good. Uh, I used up all the sessions. I had like eight, I believe. And uh, when I walked out, I was symptom free. I was like amazed. I was so amazed. Like, well, I've never had such. So uh, symptoms were just so good and i like i was really happy um but yeah I, I mean i got as the months went by i got a little too carried away with the usual computer stuff and just the, the stuff that i knew i should have avoided and so i like as the months went by i, I kind of like get the flare-up again it was really bad i was still i was getting in my arms again and my i was getting a lot of vascular issues with my arm my hands i feel a lot of coldness throughout my whole arms and then I kind of like think I need to go back to see somebody. 
So I still go see Dr. Bollinger again. And, you know, he was telling me, what were you doing to aggravate the symptoms? Like, yeah, I was doing certain things like this, like texting and all that stuff that kind of, because when I use my phone, I have to like, I can't look down. I'd have to like put it like this, but then it kind of aggravates it still. So, uh, yeah. And then I, uh, he gives me another referral for PT, but, uh, doesn't, I can't go back to the same person because, uh, they shut down the place. So I was like, oh, that's awkward. And, uh, so I go back to this, I don't remember how I got here, but I went to this different place and I saw this, uh, another PT, uh, it didn't work out too well. Cause I was more working with the, with the, AIDS, I guess what they call them or the interns more with than her. Cause she mm -hmm. was working with like three or four patients at a time. I was like, wow, what, what's going on? And, uh, so, so did these physical therapists know specific TOS physical therapy or did you get the feeling that they were doing just kind of general shoulder stuff? She was doing a lot of, uh, pe pec stretching, uh, uh, working on my stretching, my scaling muscles and all that stuff. But like a lot of the exercises I was being kind of told to do were like, aggravating my symptoms like i was doing like kind of like some chest strengthening and i was like yeah yeah like i was like doing the straight thing and i was like man i'm really hurting i i, I should probably say something but like i i don't want to say anything because i i'm just so used to like not uh wimping out or like about with something but uh yeah like i just stopped going because like man i'm not feeling better at all with this uh with these therapies or these uh so i uh so i was i wasn't really sure what to do so i like uh, for no reason i was kind of like looking on uh, instagram for like tos i like just literally type in tos and i find this uh tos education i like look find the channel and i found that like you could uh send in a for consultation or find people in the area who could treat tos so i'm like okay i'll do that and then i got all the names found newkirk's name was uh the first one that popped uh, closest to me so i tried to make an appointment with newkirk and it was like uh, pretty far out but then the month or the week before i was gonna see him this, i just want to makes real quick this is in 2021 um he cancels it or the, the person told me to cancel it he didn't give me any uh any reasons why but she just canceled it i'm like well i'm all right i really wanted to see him because i i've heard his talk i knew who he was who's going to be like i was like really excited to meet him and then i just it got canceled i wasn't sure what to do so i look at all the specialists that uh, dr warden gave me and they all like this didn't either a didn't accept my insurance or they just didn't want to they just didn't take me in uh i was trying to see dr avery here in san francisco but uh this is the the lady was saying that i have to uh, this is for we're being reviewed for surgery so she didn't take me in uh yeah i was just wasn't sure what to do at that time and then uh, i think like months later we called dr uh, newkirk's office again he's like oh he's taking patients again i'm like wait he is i'm like because i thought he wasn't gonna take patients again yeah. and then i have to wait another six weeks which is like really nothing in tos time and then uh uh i went i meet him and then like i was my symptoms were pretty good at that point like i was feeling a lot better i go to see him and like it was he was really nice about my soul situation and like he took my took in all my history at the at least initial parks i mean if i told my whole history right there we'd probably be there all day and uh yeah he just took in all my symptoms and he examined my shoulder blades he said like yeah they're out of place he said my i got edema a little edema one out of four on the edema right here um says my my grip strength's weak for my age group but yeah he's like yeah I, i'm so glad you're he said i'm so glad your symptoms are good he says i don't think you're a candidate for surgery i don't think you need an mri at this point um so he recommended i see a, a physical therapist and i'm like he tasked me where i live and i say yeah i live in santa rosa he's like oh i know this guy named uh, todd soros and uh, uh he recommends you see him and I, that takes another six six weeks of course because he's really popular there and then uh yeah, I've been seeing him. It's uh, this is recent, like maybe I started seeing him a, a month ago. Mm -hmm. It's going pretty good. He's, he's doing the ed invest edge loop technique. So he's having me do a lot of diaphragmatic breathing, a lot of just we're taking really easy, like just doing all this stuff. He had me stop doing some exercises that were strengthening. And uh, yeah, it's been going really good. I've just been doing all the exercises he's giving me. I'm seeing him tomorrow. But yeah, he's been really, really good. He's very good at communicating the language of TOX. So I'm like, so perplexed with all the language because like dr newkirk was throwing all these words at me i'm trying to remember all of it i'm like uh, yeah but um yeah it's going really good i'm feeling really good right now um that's, that's great I, so we've we've heard good things about todd source i've spoken to him about a month ago okay and, uh, very nice very nice man yeah um i'm gonna hit a few points of your long story and number yeah. one it, it really gets me here to listen to your story and some of the ups and downs not just physically but emotionally and yeah. uh, you know, I get the feeling how strong you are 
to have gone through this, uh, but that makes it even worse to hear about your downtimes. So I'm glad you're here sharing yeah. most kindly with everybody else. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. How did you feel the difference between the docs who said, yeah, you know, I looked at your hands, I held up a flashlight, they look fine, and the docs later who did, even though they didn't come up with a diagnosis, but they did a lot of tests, the blood work, the cervical spine MRI, what was the difference in feeling after seeing those two different docs? Well, I really, the ones that like did all the extra work, I felt like I was really being listened to, or they actually really took into account what, how I was feeling. Um, I just felt like I was going to be panned off a bit with like just doing the hand thing and then just kind of don't really do anything else. Um, but yeah, I really, really, I really felt like I was really appreciated or really thought of when, uh, when the doctors were really trying to see if what was going on. And I really liked the doctor I met who just said like, yeah, I just, I just don't know what's going on. Um, cause he just told me like, yeah, I, cause I really think that there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know when it comes to, uh, evaluating disease. Cause it's such, it's, it's such a, what I was dealing with, it's such a complex uh, issue to diagnose. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I felt really, the, the doctors that really did all the work and like took me into like, just, I really remember them the most kind of fondly. So, but the ones that kind of just panned me off and real quick and just, I just don't really want to remember that well, or I just don't remember as much. So that's, that's a common thread for TOS patients that it, it makes a huge emotional difference. The doctors who try, yeah. Even the doctors who say, as you so well pointed out, there are docs who say, look, I don't know, but let's do A, B, C, D. Yeah. There are the other docs who say, I don't know. And what are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> the end. There's the big end at the end. Yeah. So then how did you feel when Dr. Bollinger just spit it out and said, you've got classic thoracic outlet syndrome? Ugh. Best day of my life, honestly. Because um, that was such a relief weight weight off my back like like no joke like i had no symptoms for like four weeks after he told me that I, this is i had just so much, so much anxiety or stress around what was going on and just thinking about what was going on that just it just really relieved my mind knowing that i actually have something to work with um yeah I just I, I was super relieved that i met uh, found dr bollinger and yeah i mean i don't think you realize how much of an impact he made i mean emotionally when he told me that because uh yeah, but uh, yeah, I felt really relieved when he told me that. Totally, absolutely understandable. My God, something you could work with, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I so just did. You I, do a lot of reading and educating yourself after you got that three-word diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, I looked at some like YouTube, like just some things to do on uh, like exercises you could do to help with the. Like, I do a lot of uh, lying on a foam roll just to stretch mm -hmm. out that chest, get that chest open, and uh, I didn't like read a lot of literature at the time uh compared to when i saw this channel because i've seen like pretty much all these videos with all the literature um but uh i didn't do a lot of research at the time into this at the, when i first got that i was more just looking it up and just man that's all the symptoms i'm getting and i just just stuck with the exercise i was given and worked with the with the pt was doing me but then um but yeah once the symptoms kind of flared up i felt like it really helped me to learn more about the the anatomy and the literature of what's going on about why certain th th things I do, why it causes this issues. So, uh, yeah, I think really just, no, I'm still learning a lot. I mean, I just so much I need to learn about it, but, uh, learning about it's really helped me understand the disease better. So you felt empowered by just the diagnosis. Yeah. Yes, I did. Do you, do you think back to, uh, what you would have done differently if you could do it all over again? Honestly, I probably wouldn't change anything. Cause like, I'm just, thinking about if I like changed about what I did at the time, I, I wouldn't be who I am today. Cause like, I really take pride in taking care of my health. Um, it's just, just getting to you. I, I didn't really think about health at all. I think at that age, like I had such a bad diet. I never really took, uh, uh, care of my mental health and all that stuff. But then like, it just, it just, this disease really took me, um, ha helped me take pride in taking care of my health and, um, taking care of my body. Cause I only got one to, I only got one, so I got to take care of it. And um, it, I don't think I would change anything really. I mean, maybe the only thing I'd probably change is like once I change insurance, I'd probably go straight to Newkirk for all those hurdles before my symptoms started getting worse. But uh, honestly, I wouldn't really change anything because I just I just wouldn't be who I am today if I changed it. So, Wow, that's a very positive message. Yeah.
I really appreciate that. Um, uh, first of all, I'm really sorry to hear the stuff that you've gone through, not the least of which is a house burning down. Yeah. But for you to say that um, it strengthened you is really the best positive you can take out of all of this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was... I, I appreciate that. So um, I just want to make it clear for people who are viewing, uh, we've not done an MRI on you. I have no proprietary interest in you or fees that I'm getting from you. We're really doing this because we want other people to learn and maybe move their progress a little bit faster than, than what you did because mm -hmm. you really suffered a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> so right now, uh, you've seen Dr. Newkirk. You have a diagnosis from Dr. Bollinger, and I'm sure Dr. Newkirk confirmed it. Mm -hmm. You feel uh, good seeing uh, Todd Soares, the physical therapist. Yes. And you feel in control of things. When you get little flares, do you recognize it early? Yeah. Yeah. I just try to, uh, I try to back off when I'm doing something and I just, I got a lot of exercise. I feel like I could do just to calm things down. Uh, I just, I just, <laughs> I used to be like as a kid, cause I didn't really think what pain, what was pain. And like, cause when I have feel pain, I just next day I feel fine. And, but, uh, I try to really take pain as like a signal, like, yeah, stop whatever you're doing or just change whatever you're doing. I've had to really modify a lot of the things I do in my life to, uh, accommodate to you. it's frustrating, like very frustrating, but like, I just make, I, have to, I just have to work with it. And, uh, I'm trying my best to uh, get more confident with my body with trying to take more classes with school. And, um, cause yeah, just one of the biggest problems with me mostly is just being more confident about my body with my hands and, but, uh, yeah. So would you say your symptoms are 80%, 90% gone? How, how much improvement do you think you have after your trip through all this? So right now it's been like maybe 1% lately. Just I just get occasional coldness or uh, occasional tingling if I have my arm in the wrong place or just I'm just being weird, just like laying on my arm and my arm goes numb. But like so 1%, uh, 1% of the symptoms you used to have. Yeah, just or maybe not times a lot of times zero. I mean, it's just it's just mainly coldness at times if I'm in the wrong position. But yeah, I feel a whole lot better when I first got this. Uh, it's crazy. Wow, that is great. Yeah. Uh, have you done any social media or Facebook uh, groups or anything like that? No, I'm I'm pretty shy about this stuff. So I, yeah, I just I haven't really talked to anyone about this. I haven't met anyone about with TOS. So that's kind of the. Kind of one of the main reasons why I looked up TOS on uh, Instagram because I was like kind of curious if there was any groups that uh, have this disease. Uh, I found this like group on a uh, Instagram TOS sucks. I'm like, yeah, it definitely sucks. But uh, uh, yeah, but I found TOS education. But yeah, I'm like, I'm like a little bit surprised. Like, yeah, I didn't think there's so many people out here because I was like, they say on the when you search on Google, it says like rare or like the cases, but like it doesn't seem like it's rare. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't seem like it's rare to me either. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the official diagnosis is rare because of situations like yours where docs don't uh, approach it. Yeah, uh, I, can, I can tell you hearing some of that story and clicking in my mind a bunch of medical things. If I had a patient come to me who had bilateral hand symptoms, I wouldn't be thinking muscle strain. I mean, it could happen. I wouldn't be thinking repetitive stress quite as much. I'd be thinking, number one, make sure the cervical spine is OK, right? Mm -hmm. You know, or on a, like your second group of docs who really look for inflammatory disease, arthritis, you know, look for something that's a systemic disease because two hands at the same time, there's got to be something centrally that's getting to both hands. Um, you know, a doc doing a B12 test, you know, there are rare cases B12 deficiency can cause a neuropathy, but that's kind of down the list. Um, you know, there's a lot more common things, just even a cervical disc herniation can cause bilateral symptoms. <clears throat> so it, hearing your story, um, I'm guessing that some of your docs were pretty busy and too busy to really pursue much. I'm really glad to hear the group of docs who didn't make the diagnosis, but kept going for a while. You know, they ordered blood tests, cervical spine MRI. They thought maybe rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis is one of those systemic diseases that could get both hands. It's sometimes symmetric, sometimes asymmetric. Yeah. Like both hands being involved is not at all uncommon. So those docs at least gave it a good college try. I'm glad to hear that. And then, yeah, you lucked out with Dr. Bollinger. Yeah. Um, just as a, a point, a teaching point for people who are listening, there is a good amount of medical literature about people who have carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosed and treated, and they do fine for a few months. And then the symptoms come back in the elbow. 
and then the symptoms get up to here. So there's something called multiple crush or double crush syndrome. When you press on a nerve proximally, all the nerves distally to the elbow, to the wrist, can be more sensitive than usual. And therefore, even minor compression can cause symptoms. So sometimes docs get fooled. And I think most of the hand surgeons we work with, when they see carpal tunnel, they do look up higher to make sure there's nothing more proximal, which it sounds like Dr. Bollinger did. So he was right on top of it. Yeah. And I think that really changed your, your pathway immensely. Right. Yeah. So what advice would you give to people right now? Somebody who's watching this and says, I don't know, could I have TOS? Well, what advice would you give to them? Oof. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> don't go through what I went through. Yeah, just don't do I Yeah, just, well, if, you, if you're not happy with what you're being told with a doctor, just keep going. Like, just see, keep what I did. Just keep seeing doctors. If you just don't, like, be okay with the pain because pain's not fun. And it's just, especially with TOS, if you just keep letting it progress the way it does, it could go really bad. And um, just keep searching for a doctor. If, if you're not happy with what you're being told, just keep, you're, you're allowed to just keep seeing the next doctor and get that answer. And uh, that's why I say just keep being a, you have to be your best advocate as a patient for your health. You can't, the doctors aren't responsible for like, you know, making sure what you do want to do, you got to do what you, what you need to do for your health. So um, that's what I have to say. Um, yeah. So the docs who said, look, you know, deal with it. How, how old are you, Kyle, by the way? I'm 23 right now. All right. So telling a 20, <laughs> telling a 20 year, 21 year old, otherwise healthy male. Yeah deal with it. it is what it is <laughs> i hear that and it's uh yeah it's troubling to me to hear that um i've been lucky so far i haven't had very many health issues and uh again you know compliments on your strength to get through this to this point because uh, i think certainly you didn't have all the best um support along the way yeah so um let's talk about the mental health part of it a little bit yeah um you share with us. Thank you very much. Um, in our experience, TOS has gotten some patients really, really, really down. And I think that in the literature, that's not played up as much as it could be. Um, we do know that patients with chronic pain can have higher degrees of depression. But I think some of that medical literature tends to emphasize people who are older, or maybe people who have like drug uh, drug use problems but we don't see a lot of it with young healthy people who get a disease like tos yeah. tos is not the only one but since we're talking tos here it, it's common to have an emotional component to it which you brought up yeah and i will say that there's some docs who um some docs will see that emotional component and say okay i don't know how much pain the patient has but obviously they're emotional and they will, some docs will take that and say, okay, they're emotional, so I'm going to discount the pain report. But there are other yeah. docs who are smart and say, well, maybe they're emotional because they have a lot of pain. Yeah. So for reviewers, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with that or if you get docs who are blowing you off, you need a different doc. The emotional part of it is part of it. It happens yeah. with all patients with pain like this. Yeah. So uh, let's see if we, we have some comments here. So uh, I know we had a comment from... Virgo 8708, who says, I feel your frustration, Kyle. I have been on a long journey myself. Oh, thank you. And this is really valuable. I think that, you know, other patients who watch this are going to say, yeah, you know, Kyle's just a regular, young, healthy looking guy. It can happen to anybody. So let me, is there something else that you want to add at this point that I haven't asked about yet? No. No, yeah, I think I think everything's been said. Um, yeah, I just I just think the mental health part was just such a huge part of uh, dealing with the TOS or coping with it because I just didn't know what was going on. I felt really depressed a lot of times, and I, I mean, well, at the worst of times, I felt kind of suicidal. I needed help, and it was so hard to cope with the situation. Um, it was kind of hard too with the doctors uh, to relay the information because I'm so under such duress and stress with the pain. And they, you know, they want to ask you like all these details, like, what are you feeling here? I'm like, I'm trying really hard to tell you every pain because it hurt. I'm hurting and I'm just really anxious and stressed out by the situation. Mm. Um, and I have had doctors who kind of just, kind of just blow that off or for just. So you told your docs, I'm feeling really down about this. 
Yeah, I mean, some doctors just kind of like, like the hand surgeon I said, Dr. Diaz, he said like he knew like something's really off with me emotionally when I walked in. Um, and he was really nice about it, but. Uh, good for him. Uh, anyways. It's really good to hear that. Yeah. What about the system? How do you feel? I know you're only one patient, but you've been through a few different systems, so to speak. How do you think the medical system could make this better for TUS patients? <sighs> Yeah, I'm trying to think about this question because I'm not sure if I have the answers, but uh, part of me doesn't think it's like an institutional problem or a system problem because uh, I feel like the literature is out there about TOS, but then there's still like they're not, um, doctors are still not um, know about this. So I think more it's about just learning about the disease, um, just find that right doctor because I don't, part of me doesn't think it's the system's fault for why we're not getting the TOS. Yeah, it's frustrating that we go to a doctor. They don't know what's TOS, so they don't know where to send you. But then I just think you just got to find that guy that knows TOS or uh, I don't know if that's a really good answer or not, but it's just, a part of me doesn't think it's a system problem. Before I get to a next question from a patient, I think that's really good. And I wanted to ask you, did you have any doc who you brought up TOS and said, no, it's not TOS? From your story, I don't think it sounds that way. I think once you got the diagnosis, you only saw good people. Is that fair? Yeah, because I, I honestly didn't even know that, that phrase, TOS, uh, sure. until Dr. Uh, Bollinger brought it up. And I did hear it from uh, when uh, the guy, uh, basketball player Ma Marco Foltz, got diagnosed with it. Um, that's when I actually heard that phrase. And it's funny when I look back at it because I watched that video like a year ago. And hmm. um, I, I was like, I actually had it. And then. But yeah, I never asked a doctor like, yeah, do I have thoracic allergy? Because I didn't know that that the text of it. Or just, I just know I've heard about carpal tunnel. I've heard about cubital tunnel syndrome. And you had um, heard about those. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I never asked a doctor who like kind of just denied it was going on. I just I didn't ask him about if I have TOS. I want, I want to get back to more Faults a little bit later, but let me hit a couple of questions here. Uh, Jimmy from Sturgis, Montana says, what activity caused the most symptoms? when they first started? Uh, I would say the PC gaming, like definitely caused the most symptoms or I noticed the most symptoms. Uh, Cause I played this game where like I was, the games were last hours and I was somebody would like, just at my age, you'd, you'd be, you'd be, <laughs> we would play games for a long time. Was, you just I, get like, absorbed in it, right? Yeah, I get, I could play sessions for seven hours, like totally fine. But uh, I just noticed when I was playing the game, the computer, I was, my pinky was just getting really sore with the mouse. The tips of my fingers were getting sore when I was typing. Um, but yeah, that was the activity. I think I remember clearly that I was getting my symptoms aggravated. Some, somewhat with the console gaming, I was a little more comfortable with that, but I was still getting aggravated with that. Um, and also about the weightlifting, the, my hands were just getting sore out of a sudden. So, yeah. And plus you were taking all these credits in school. Oh yeah, the online classes for our, uh, yeah, I, all the typing, that was, that was really getting my uh fingers aggravated or just they just got so sore when i was trying to type it like i was able to make it through the semester because i was uh i found like a free voice program for tech text right. to speech right and uh, they had like this class had me do like third type in like 300 i uh, don't know like 300 like a lot of the typing just a lot of just a lot of typing and i was able to get through that semester luckily um yeah you were hitting a bunch of risk factors computer use gaming and then athletics, particularly weightlifting. So, yeah. boy, you were really, without knowing it, putting yeah. yourself in a high risk situation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Christoph says, How did you cope with emotional problems when you were at your worst? Any tips you learned from this experience? Oh, boy. Uh, honestly, when I was at my worst, I just, I really shut down. So, I can't really give advice to what to do because I, once the pain's all there, it gives me back all those memories of when I deal with the pain and I just really just shut down. I, I'm not who I am, but, uh, I try to do a lot of things like just mentally, like thinking like, man, the, the symptoms should go away in a couple of days. It should usually, cause that's always happened. I get the symptoms and I just goes away. So I try to think that mindset it's, it's, it's I'm going to weather the storm. It should be fine. Uh, so when you got symptoms, you would just stop doing anything. Mostly emotionally, because I'm, I'm like, I would stop, but like, I would just mostly shut down because I just, all the memories it brings back and all the pain I would deal with. I just didn't want to really do anything. Uh, just, 
I don't know how to explain, but yeah, I just didn't want to do anything. Um, because I was so it was the pain just gives me so much bad memories. Um but yeah, just um I just try to do like things to keep my mind positive about the situation. Luckily I haven't been back in those uh getting my mind back to those places because it was just places I just don't want to go back to ever again. Um sure. Uh, you have a good support group at home. Yeah, yeah, I got I got a really good support group with my family. I I see a therapist every couple weeks. Um she gives me good techniques to deal with. I I meditate often, so I really try to relax my mind and do things to self love and all that stuff. And um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. That's interesting. Do you think <clears throat> TOS patients sometimes take that? You mentioned this before, Kyle, and I, it's really the first time I've heard it, but it makes a lot of sense. Do you think some TOS patients take it upon themselves that they're at fault because the doc says my tests don't show anything? Yeah, I mean. 100%. I, I was, I really started my self loading. Uh, when the hand surgeon, I, I really looked up to him and I just, when he told me like, yeah, it's, I didn't think he really sped it out for me or told me that was what he was saying. But like, when he was like saying like, this is the way you're built. It's just the way it is. I really thought took from it. Like, yeah, it's my fault that I got all these issues. And I really blamed myself for the whole situation. Mm -hmm. I was so self loaded I really just did not want to be me or just, um, but luckily uh, uh, Dr. Diaz, the guy I mentioned before, he just told me like, it's, not your fault it's not your fault this and it really helped to hear that and it was just so um i'm still struggling a little bit today blaming myself for but i just i'm feeling a lot better myself physically so yeah maybe this is why you know came connecting to other people who have it and you know yeah. we have people commenting on our our instagram as well as facebook but you know hearing other people have this just like people are listening to what you're going through emotionally hopefully mm -hmm. you can realize that this is common and it's not your fault in any way it doesn't matter that i say that you have to internalize that but man, yeah a lot of patients go through these uh structures the, the reason i asked you the question about a doc denying tos to you is because some patients go through that and i i think you can probably imagine how bad that feels yeah yeah the definitely that's right sure yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so you, it took you a while to get diagnosed, but I will tell you when I first started doing this twenty years ago, Kyle, it was very common to see patients who had gone ten years or longer without a diagnosis. Wow, you know, it's just, it's just yeah. so hard on them and their families. Yeah, wow. So as bad as your story is and the stuff you've gone through, I'm still glad that it's relatively shorter now. Um, Angela, Angela Porcelli said, uh, more doctors should specialize in this. I think she heard your comment about the fact that some docs just didn't even know about it, didn't think about it. Yeah. And thank you, Angela. I think that's totally true. I think some of that can be changed from people like us in patients. If we have docs who connect with patients and we listen and we have patients who have all this power through social media that we never had before we can raise awareness. You had heard of carpal tunnel syndrome before, yeah. but you hadn't heard about TOS. Yeah. And so you wouldn't even know how to search. It, yeah. If you search for neck pain or arm pain in Google, you would get about 10 million, uh, you know, entries that are all, all over the place. Yeah. And it, it's not helpful at all. Yeah. So let's get back to Markel Fultz. Interestingly, for people who don't know, he was, I believe, the number one overall draft pick in the NBA. Yeah. And he went to, he started playing uh, and he sucked and he had all kinds of issues, health issues. Interestingly, just yesterday, I was reading a, um, a lay article about him, an interview with him. And the title and subtitle said something like, Markel Fultz has recovered from this disease that even MRI can't find. Now, I'm obviously a little bit biased in this, as you might understand. <clears throat> But they, they interviewed him and he talked about that. He repeated that. Now MRI can't even see it. You know, I wish I could reach out to him and say, um, maybe you could use your platform to help spread the word. And in a way he is. Uh, we've seen, you know, several major league baseball pitchers diagnosed. And I keep hoping that each one of these celebrities that gets diagnosed, that it gets a little bit more in the public eye. So people like you don't have to go through all this. You yeah. find it earlier. Yeah. So, so my hope is that patients regular people can help spread the awareness of it. So the docs have to pick it up. 
Yes, definitely. And I'll make one other point. There is no uh, specialist really that handles TOS. We've seen specialists, obviously radiology, internal medicine, um, pain, physiatrists, surgeons, not just any one type of surgeon, orthopedists, vascular surgeons, neurosurgeons, um, neurologists. So you can't go look for one type of specialist, but you have to find someone who has TOS experience. But that means first you have to find out the name of the disease, right? Yeah. <laughs> and when, once you got there, then you were able to really navigate for yourself. Yes, definitely. Uh, let's see if we have, um, okay. So Gina in Fresno has a question. How many doctors total and what specialist did you see before you got the TOS diagnosis? And what specialist finally confirmed TOS? Okay, so hi Gia. Um, how many doctors total? So definitely more than I can count on my hand. Um, it's I went through like, I had to go through two systems to actually get the diagnosis. Uh, I've seen hands, um, I've seen general, couple of pra general practitioners, I've seen musculoskeletal specialists, I've seen a neurologist, I've seen the rheumatologist, I've seen, yeah, I've seen all the specialties and the person who, who uh, diagnosed me, Dr. Bollinger here, and uh, he's in Healdsburg now. Um, he's a, he's a hands orthopedic surgeon with a specialty in sports medicine. But uh, yeah, he's the guy that gave me the diagnosis, uh, the, fir the first guy to say, I have TOS. And uh, of course, Newkirk was the guy to, to rule it in. Uh, he's a neurologist. Um, but yeah, that's I, I had to see a lot of doctors before I got to that point of Dr. Bollinger. Um, it's more than 10, def I can think, right more at the top of my 10. head. What was the first system you were in? I, I think it's okay to say. Kaiser. Okay. All right. We, we've had our share of patients who have um, dealt with Kaiser. You know, Kaiser does a lot of great work for a lot of um, people. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little more challenging for him to have a disease that's a little bit um, less understood. You know, TOS has this rap of being rare. You, you mentioned this yourself. And I don't think that's true. Yeah. Uh, I will throw in my little medical points here. There is no gold standard for the diagnosis. We have ways to put MRIs together with clinical exam, but there is no gold standard. And therefore, no one knows exactly through gold standard diagnosis how many cases of TOS are out there. But we're seeing it a lot more than just 20 years ago. And we have all these people using devices, playing games, doing overhead athletics, uh, I think computer use in particular at work and at home and the small devices that everyone gets in weird positions, like you said, neck yeah. down, Tom. So I think that's driving this increase along with slowly growing awareness. So I don't yeah. think TOS is rare. I'm just going to throw in that right now. All right. Um, Maria in the Bay Area says, what exercises did your new PT have you stop right away? That's a good question. <laughs> so... I don't know why I was thinking, but like, I thought strengthening the pecs was a good idea for TOS. And then I was telling Dr. Todd, I was telling Todd Soros about, it. I didn't tell Newkirk because of this time. And he's like, uh, yeah, if you told Newkirk that he would told you right away to stop right there. So he had me stop doing the, uh, chest press, but he said like everything with the back was fine. The arms was fine. But yeah, that was the main one. He told me to stop right away. Um, I did definitely stop doing the ones that are overhead. Cause I just knew that was going to be bad. So, but yeah, that Todd Soros told me like, yeah, stop doing the chest press for now. Um, but yeah. So Steve Talikowski, who uh, you may have seen his videos here. Yeah. Uh, he talks about the edge low method as well, where he's got a lot of experience and absolutely there's no strengthening in the, in the beginning. You need to meet some milestones, right? Yeah. So I'm glad that Todd, and when I spoke to Todd, he had asked me questions about the edge low technique, which he's familiar with. And so I'm glad, really glad that you've, hooked up and you're seeing him yeah and it sounds like you feel confident in his care so far i feel very confident he's been uh very he's been very good at uh communicating the language of tos and just having just taken it very slow with the exercises I just just started out with just the first thing he really gave me to start out was diaphragmatic breathing and he's like working me up to do it on the chair and he's giving me like this uh uh Talikowski showed in the video too with the ball on the stick i i got that and he, i do the rib thing or put on the yeah. first rib um he has me do a roll on a foam roller so i'm like kind of like rolling back and forth he's trying to get like rib the ribs moving I'm, I'm trying to remember how what he wanted me to do specifically for that um so those are the main ones he's having me doing right now he has me doing the like scaling stretches the trapezius stretching but those are the main exercises he's having me doing now and now i'm at uh 
scapular stabilizer exercises, just doing the, the W's, mm -hmm. Y's, T's. Because he, he examined my, uh, the whole, my whole like physical profile. He said everything looks really good. Um, he just said like some things were a little off. But yeah, he's a set. I think he just, um, yeah, it's probably not his typical situation because usually when someone TOS comes in, they're probably like all like all in pain, like this can't move or anything. But uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, Todd Soares and Steve Talikowski for our viewers, if you want to be put in touch with these people, just feel free to contact us. Just like with Kyle, we will connect you with docs or physical therapists. We think that's one of the values we bring to help people find those specialists out there who can really move things forward. Then I got to say this, Kyle, I, I'm pretty sure at this point, I'm never going to see you in my MRI scanner because it <laughs> certainly seems like you're on the right path with the diagnosis. Yeah. You're really taking control of things. So that's really heartening to hear. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you will follow us on social media and help spread the word. Um, and hopefully we can get you back uh, a little bit in the future for, uh, you know, a progress report. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. Once um, I have not done with yeah, Dr. Sor Todd Soares, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'd like to come back. Awesome. Well, it would be great. Um, I have another question here. Um, I'm going to ask if you don't mind, which is um, I've got a couple. So Bailey in New Zealand says, how much does stress impact your symptoms? Oh, geez. Uh, hi, Bailey. Um, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Uh, especially anxiety, too. Um, I just get all once I get all stressed or tense, like let's say like first week of school or something, uh, I just my symptoms go like crazy, like. Uh, it just goes crazy. Uh, whenever I get so anxious, I just, the symptoms get really, really bad. Um, so I try to do things to calm my mind or, or just, yeah, it impacts it a lot. I would say that, um, it sucks. <laughs> do you feel like besides the physical improvement that you've made mental improvement as well? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so you can bounce back more quickly when you have a bad day. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think with the, cause I've been doing daily meditations just for the, just the mind I, I've heard like, you know, do mindfulness. And it's actually, I thought like, it was honestly kind of a joke to do that. But then I did, I'm like, wow, this really helps with my mind just to relax and take 10 minutes just to just think about nothing or just, just, just decompress. Um, cause yeah, with this is TOS. My, my TOS just gets worse if I'm like getting really anxious or just really stressed out about something or I just, cause I gotta like, sometimes I gotta relax or my symptoms would just go out of control. Um, once like, I start calming down, I'm like, oh, my symptoms are better. <laughs> uh, Freya, Herb, we can put up, Freya Moon says, I have bilateral symptoms of TOS, and the vascular surgeon says it's not likely to be TOS, but the neck. Uh, I'm going to actually take part of this one. I think that um, <clears throat> one of the confounding variables in TOS is disease of the cervical spine. So you could have a disc herniation or degenerative joint disease, and it can press on multiple nerve roots or the spinal cord. And as we discussed with Kyle's case, that may cause bilateral symptoms. I will say, though, that most people with TOS are younger and less likely to have disc herniations or degenerative joint disease. So um, older people, 50s and up, let's say, are more likely to get those disc disease or degenerative joint disease, and therefore more likely to have nerve compression from the spine than from TOS. Our study, when we do an MRI, we always include the cervical spine just to rule out the unusual case. But if your surgeon thinks that it's coming from the spine, do an MRI, that's real obvious. If you have bilateral neurogenic symptoms, then you can rule it out, get a normal cervical spine report, and then you gotta look at the thoracic outlet. And I hope that answers your question. I think it's more of a medical question, Kyle, so. yeah. I have okay. nothing to add to that. <laughs> all right. So um, I want to thank you, first of all, for finding us. It's really cool that you found TOSeducation.org. Uh, TOSeducation.org is run by Herb Rep. He does a great job recruiting speakers like Kyle. has just done a great job. It's just a regular Joe just coming on and speaking to the Internet. I love it. It's really so heartfelt and uh, I think so helpful for a lot of people. Herb also gets a lot of local experts. I'm going to look on my calendar right now to see who's coming up our next visit, which I think is. Well, maybe Herb will send it to me. But there we go. TOS and Athletes with Vernon Williams. Uh, Vernon Williams, very interesting guy from Cedars Sinai in Los Angeles. And that's February 1st. Now, we might schedule something in between. Uh, with the holidays, we have to work around that a bit. 
but we'll do our best because we uh, know that this helps a lot of people. Also, uh, I encourage you to follow us on uh, social media. Any help we can get to spread the word, to boost our numbers, we love that. Any conversation we can host and contribute to is really good for a lot of patients and hopefully some docs. Again, we are TOSMRI.com, that website. You can contact me with any questions on that. Uh, if you follow us on social media, like Instagram, Facebook, it's always TOSMRI. You can also look up TOS Education on Instagram. They've got a big following. Uh, again, Kyle, I want to thank you for your time and for your sharing. I think it's, it really helps a lot of people to hear this. Oh, and, yeah. uh, do you have any last thoughts you want to add? Oh, I just want to mention if anyone's watching this after, if they just want to comment their questions, because I could I could just see the comment. I'll answer if you have any questions, if you're able to catch me on the live stream. But yeah, I don't have any other lasting thoughts. Um, yeah, I just think, uh, I think, like I said earlier, I think everyone needs to be their best advocate when it comes to their health. So, Excellent advice. And I want to thank you personally again. So I'm Dr. Scott Worden, the TOS guy. Remember, don't guess with TOS, okay? Get an MRI if you need it, but see a doctor who's a specialist in TOS first. All right, thanks for your time, everybody, for viewing. Kyle, thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.